classical saxophone versus jazz saxophone. Oh boy, it's about to get controversial up in here. So this video is a plea for you if you're a saxophonist or really regardless of what instrument you play to play a variety of music and to concentrate on what you love. So in the opening clip, you heard Kenny Garrett playing the second measure of Eugene Boza's famous work, Improvisation and Caprice. Well, actually he was just playing a pattern based off of the first, third, and the sixth scale degree. Of Regardless of whatever it was that he was thinking when he was playing it, we probably will never know. But one thing is for sure, a well-rounded saxophonist has played a variety of different styles and genres of music. Take a quick listen to what Phil Woods mentioned about his process in learning music. I mean, when I came to New York to, to be a musician, there, there were no jazz schools. I couldn't, I couldn't even major in the saxophone in Manhattan School of Music or Juilliard. I majored in the clarinet. I learned music the old-fashioned way, like everybody else does. You learn counterpoint scales, arpeggios, uh, and, and ear training, and keyboard harmony. And then you pick a style. That's the way music has been for hundreds of years. You know, that you don't, you don't just play giant steps and say, yeah, I'm into Coltrane, Jack. You know, or you can walk around with the Omni book and say, oh, yeah, I'm into Bird. So the one point that I would like to add is once you've decided on a style, continue studying, uh, I guess you would call it the opposing style, if you will. So quick disclaimer, I'm fully aware there's more than just classical and jazz, as we call it. But for this video, we're just gonna talk about those two. But use your imagination. A lot of musicians really get caught up on this fact that I can't play classical music unless I have this Van Dorn AL3 or this Selmer C Star, Eugene Rousseau classical mouthpiece. And the same as vice versa, you know, a lot of classical musicians are like, I can't play jazz unless I have this $2,000 Theo Wani mouthpiece. But let's be honest, when it comes to mouthpieces, it's only a tool to help facilitate the sound that you have in your head come out through your horn. So if you're a jazzer and you don't like your classical sound, you should probably listen to more Don Senta or Otis Murphy or Claude DeLange or Timothy McAllister. And the same is reverse. If you're a classical player and you're going for a different sound, a jazz sound, if you will, then you should probably listen to artists that spark uh, your ear. For me, those were like Kenny Garrett and Dick Oates and all kinds of other musicians out there. But I digress. I honestly think sometimes we're missing the point. It's really all about playing music that brings you joy, whether that's improvised music or it's written down, unless you're in music school, in which case you'll probably just play whatever your professor gives you. But I honestly do think the ultimate goal is to expose you to a plethora of different musical styles and genres and to take what you like from those and what you don't like and learn from them and and grow as a musician. Because if I'm being honest, I would love to sound like this guy. And I would love to sound like this guy. So with that being said, I'm gonna go practice, out.